Hey, Coach, you've been obviously doing this a while and assistant coach for most of your career up until the last three or four years, I guess three years. How is this day different sitting in your chair now as a head coach than when you're assistant? And sure, you wanted everything to go well for the program, but you had your guys you were honing in now. Now they're all your guys. Yeah, just that you're worried about, not worried, but you're so uh, engaged and, and involved in, in every position. And, um, you know, there's a lot of time invested into these young men. And before you were just worried about me as the tight ends coach or running backs coach or whatever it might be. Now it's not just all these guys that you've developed relationships with, but also understanding that uh, getting them here into your program uh, is a direct correlation between how successful you're going to be as a head coach and as a program. So it's the magnitude has increased, the time involved. You know, I was coaching tight ends at Oklahoma and Georgia and you'd go into signing day and you felt pretty good about the guys that you were recruiting signing and you were pretty relaxed and, <laughs> and whatnot. Whereas the head coach, you're worried about the entire signing class and the signing day going the way you want it to. Coach, you guys signed two five stars this morning. Uh, Dylan Stewart out of Washington, D.C., defensive end, Josiah Thompson from Dylan, offensive tackle. Um, I believe both of them are going to go down or as currently two of the top 10 highest rated recruits in South Carolina history. Um, yeah. What was your pitch to both of them? Um, you know, both were unique just because of where they're from. Josiah being an in-state guy, he's somebody that uh, three years ago when I got hired here at South Carolina, I was made aware of him pretty quickly. So we immediately started uh, recruiting him. And along with Cam Pringle, another offensive tackle, and Blake Franks, another offensive tackle here from the state. Uh, but just with with Josiah, great family. Mom and dad are awesome. And, and um, just the opportunity here at Carolina to come here and very similar to what I told Alshon Jeffrey and Stephon Gilmore and Javion Clowney and those guys, DJ Swearinger back when I was here as an assistant coach, the opportunity to come and do something for your home state school and uh, try and bring an SEC championship here. And then with uh, Dylan, uh, certainly the opportunity here, uh, Sterling Lucas, his position coach is fantastic and uh, opportunity to be coached by Sterling. But then the fact that we had so many guys from that Washington, D.C., Virginia, Maryland area that were already on our team, they were our best recruiters uh, as well. You know, they came here, they were freshmen this past season, or freshmen right now, and they've had a really good experience here in Columbia. And Dylan saw that, and, and they did a great job of helping us uh, recruit him as well. But certainly to be able to get not just a, a five-star from your state, but then to be able to get a five-star, I think he's the highest rated prospect we've ever signed outside the state of South Carolina, which is, uh, which is huge and, and excited about, you know, Dylan being here. Yeah, that kind of leads me into my next question. You came in with a specific uh, recruiting plan. You know, obviously you want to recruit your backyard, but you also said you wanted to hit the Northeast. I guess some of it was some of your coaches on staff like Pete Limbo. And that's SEC schools recruit everywhere, but maybe that's sort of like a little bit of an untapped market there. And you've had success with Nicholas Harbor last year. You just mentioned Dylan Stewart going into another quarterback you got who's since mm -hmm. transferred, but from Delaware. So I guess was that your plan? And it, it appears that still still is an area of focus for you guys. Yeah, absolutely. I think there's a couple of different things. Um, one, South Carolina is not a very big state, just population wise. Now, I read something yesterday where tons of people are moving to South Carolina, which is great. That bodes well for uh, those families that are moving to South Carolina that have a lot of high school prospects that can play SEC football, hopefully. But it's not a big state compared to Texas, California, Florida, Georgia. So the amount of power five players coming out of the state is not uh, very big. So you've got to be able to keep the best ones in South Carolina at home, which we've done a great job of that the last two years. And then you've got to be able to go out and go into surrounding states. And we've always done that here, whether it be you know, Stephen Garcia out of the state of Florida or Connor Shaw out of Georgia or Melvin Ingram out of North Carolina. But I always felt like there was an untapped area being Virginia, Maryland, D.C. Uh, I know from coaching at Virginia Tech, you would see those guys, they would leave and they would go to Ohio State and Penn State and Michigan. But I always saw, well, why not head south? I mean, so many guys, they want to head south. They want to play in the south. They want to play in the SEC. And if you're in Virginia, Maryland, D.C. or anywhere above it, we signed Dante Reno out of Connecticut today. Uh, if you're in those areas, why would you not want to come to South Carolina? Because from a geographic standpoint, Columbia, South Carolina is closer to those areas than anywhere else in the SEC. You mentioned in-state talent. You guys signed four of the top five players in South Carolina this morning. Just how critical was that for this class? Huge, um, huge. That's where it all starts. And you've got to be able to, you know, control your state. And 
And we've done a really good job of that. Go back to last year when we signed Marky Anderson and we brought in Lenora Sellers, you know, two guys from the state of South Carolina that are going to be really great players for us. And then this year um, as well. And I know, Grace, when I got hired here, we did not win a head-to-head recruiting battle with Clemson initially. And we've been able to here over the last uh, – last couple of years and not just Clemson, but Georgia, you know, wanted these offensive linemen and Alabama and, and a who's who of college football recruited these guys. So when you're top players, you're able to keep your best players in state. That's huge. That's what we were able to do when I was an assistant coach here and we we're able to keep so many of these guys at home and you're not going to get all of them. I mean, I can remember when I was here as an assistant, we had, you know, AJ Green's from South Carolina. He went to Georgia and Robert Gwen, uh, Robert Quinn is from Charleston and he went to North Carolina and, Daquan Bowers went to Clemson. You know, you're not going to get everybody, but you've got to be able to win your share. And uh, we were able to uh, we were able to do that that this year, which is huge. Earlier, we've t- we talked to Jed Fish. We talked to Rhett Lashley for this program and about the calendar. And obviously, you know, with the portal opening, signing day, everyone admits this is kind of a problem. And I think the word un- unsustainable is is what people say. But is there a solution that makes sense? Um, yeah, I mean, two things stand out to me. One, I think the portal window is too big, too long. uh, And it's already been shrunk a little bit this year. If I'm not mistaken, I think last year it stayed open to like the middle of January. This year it closes on January 3rd. But, you know, to me, the portal's open for a month, I guess it is right now. And I think most young men, if they're going to transfer, they don't need a month to decide that. They probably have an idea they're going to before the season ends. And then certainly you run into bowl games and whatnot. And uh, if you did close the portal earlier, I think you have a little bit more clarity on high school recruiting and and what your roster is going to look like a little bit sooner. And then, you know, head coaches of bowl teams and playoff teams, they then have to make the decision on whether they want to let those guys you know, play in bowl games or not if they're entering the portal. So I'd love to maybe find a way to just want guys to be able to better their situations and and transfer. I'm not saying that, but just maybe shortening the window a little bit more. Uh, And then I'm not against the early signing period. I know most people say push signing day back to February. I do want us to continue to find a way to have an early signing period. Like we're not going to quit recruiting in the summertime. It's not like if we push signing day back to February that we're just going to stop bringing in guys on visits in the summertime. We're going to continue to do that. But I just use the example of our class today. Uh, These guys have been committed to us since the summertime. Uh, Now, we had to hold off a lot of big time programs, like I said, that that we're trying to get them to come to their school. But our whole class, I mean, I think they they all had their uh, papers signed and sent in by like 8.05 this morning and they were done. And if they could have signed on September 1st, I would say that probably 90 percent of our signing class today would have signed on September 1st. So still have an early one, still have a late one. But I don't want to do away with the early signing period, in my opinion. I may be in the minority on that, but the calendar is jacked up and it's not ideal. And it's December is really, really tough and it's not getting any easier right now. I mean, yeah, signing day is over and people are like, well, hopefully you can get some rest now. Well, I wish like the portals open two more weeks. Uh, so there's going to be things that continue to happen, hopefully not with your my own roster, but more than likely we may. And then there's still guys that we're looking to bring in uh, from a depth standpoint and other positions also through the portal. My last question for you, Coach, who is someone in this class, maybe underrated prospect we're not talking about now, but might be in the future? I'll give you two, and they both pop in my head because they're both from the same hometown, Savannah, Georgia. And I would say uh, Michael Smith, the tight end, and uh, David Busey, a defensive back. I think both those guys, they come from great programs uh, down in Savannah, great families, but they're just they're football players. I think both of them, David's going to start out as a defensive back. Michael's going to start out as a tight end, but I think both those guys could go play uh, David could play wide receiver and Michael could play defensive end outside linebacker and, and, and not miss a beat. You know, I think those guys are uh, two really, really just good football players. They're competitors uh, that not a lot of people are talking about, but we're really excited about. 